Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. You know you've got your boys, the B and the L, the LB, pound for pound. And we're bringing you guys two dividend stocks that are hot and big on my watch list. You know, I know Bert has a, at least 200 shares of this Dividend King. So guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we do it, everybody, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. We're continuing our journey to grow our YouTube subscribers, but also we're not just on YouTube. Catch us on Instagram and mainly Twitter, where guys, we just published today, time of this recording, a giveaway challenge for our Twitter feed too. We do them on YouTube, but we're also doing it on Twitter. We hit 27,000 uh, Twitter followers yesterday. We get 28,000 by the end of the month. We're giving away a mug to somebody. If we can all juice it up to 30,000 though, DD sweatshirts coming to some person's way. So everyone check out Twitter, go follow us. There's a link below. Um, enter, make sure you enter that giveaway so you can see us everywhere. Exactly, guys. And you haven't, definitely check out our fun little shorts we've been putting out. Bert's been squeezing them out on some dividend increases. We got some new hot short PSA video clips we've been putting out on the cards that we've got graded. The Pokemon, the NBA, you know, the baseball cards, we all got graded football cards. So definitely check it out. Have some fun with it because I know we did have a blast. Yeah, um, maybe getting ready to, to possibly do another submission if we feel if we get if we get the interest. So do that, everybody. Yeah. But you know what? All right, we've gotten all these out of the way. Lanny, I love these two stocks on your watch list. I don't know. I can't say anything more than I just love the two companies that we're about to talk about today. Stock. Yeah, guys, let's dive in. I mean, we're talking about Johnson & Johnson, the Dividend King, the 60-plus-year-old dividend increaser over here. Plus, we're talking about United Parcel Service, ticker symbol UPS. You know, a little bit of a backstory. During this past week of February, what was it, Bert? February, what? Valentine's Day week, 13th, right? 13th. Yeah. yeah. So February 13th, you know, I actually picked up shares throughout the week from 161, even below 157 um, at points with Johnson & Johnson. What's happening right now is the legal lawsuits of the baby powder slash towel is really picking up right now. I believe one is going to court. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, big interest right now in that, as well as a lot of downward pressure yeah. on Johnson and Johnson, the dividend king from a share price standpoint. And what that did with the lawsuits is we all knew these lawsuits were coming, but unfortunately it didn't cap the liability like everybody was expecting. There, there could potentially be larger dollar amounts, which is why investors are kind of getting a little spooked here. Still a lot to be told. We're not legal experts. We can't tell you what it is, but we can tell you our thoughts about Johnson & Johnson based on the metrics. That's what we focus on. What are the current dividend stock metrics? And guys, so when we look through both of these dividend stocks, you know, we're using the close price here on February 17th. We use Yahoo Finance analyst estimates on those earnings per share estimates. We use forward earnings per share when we look at the valuation of both stocks. Again, really, the reason why you, I like both of these stocks is, you know, they're huge, right? You know, Johnson & Johnson's got over a $400 billion market cap. They've been through it all before, all of it. UPS, a premier, you know, critical service in the infrastructure now of the convenience lifestyle that everybody has to have at yeah. this point. That's what we like. They're boring but they're great and they're great because they are boring. And that's why we like these companies. They're not going anywhere. Johnson & Johnson is going to be joining the spinoff party later in 2023. Still though, I, I had to do a double take when you put the market caps, 419 billion. I don't know why I didn't realize they were that large of a company. And I invested the in them every kings, week. Bert, the king yeah. of kings. Yeah. So when we look at these companies, how do we do it? Using our stock screener, three metrics. One, price to earnings ratio less than the S&P 500. Two, Payout ratio less than 60%. Three, history of increasing dividends. We look at the five-year dividend growth rate and how long a company has been growing that dividend. Lastly, that bonus metric, the dividend yield. So we're going to look at the metrics. We're going to run each through our screener. And Lanny can then tell you why he's watching them, which will become pretty obvious. And then potential entry points of when he's going to start buying them. I know there are a lot of stubborn investors out there that are waiting for the share price on Johnson & Johnson, especially. They get down, you know, they're trading at 160, 39. They want them to be in the 140. They want to be at 130. And guys, Johnson & Johnson usually just doesn't have that big of a shock to the stock price. You calling so uh, investors stubborn is like the pot calling the kettle black. Lady. Yeah, exactly. 
yeah. I'm, as, I'm as stubborn as I get. So if I've been buying that, <laughs> I'm not going to say that that means anything, but um, obviously do your own research. Oh, I, hope that they get, I hope that they get down to 140. Yeah, I would we'll keep buying. I'll, I'll be coming yeah. back in. Yeah. I'm, I, I have a full boat, but I'll be jumping in. Yeah. So, you know, and you look at it like, oh, I know a lot of the debate is, is well, what if your cash is earning 4%, 4.3%, 4.5%? Well, what happens when the interest rate machine stops on the Fed side? Rates will start coming down on the bank side. And by that point, shop prices should be going up because future borrowing rates are going down. So the cost will be going down for businesses, which means yields will go down. So it's hard to always find the right entry yield point too for a lot of dividend stocks right now. That's why we are buying dividend stocks with cash that could be earning yeah. Three and a half, four, four and a half percent, because you know, long term, these entry points you probably won't see. Right. And you can't time the market. So, timing the market is a fool's game. And that's the point Lanny is making right there. Just buy when the metrics look good, show when they're undervalued. And if, if it keeps dropping, keep adding, keep lowering that cost base. So, that's a beautiful strategy to execute right now. So, let's keep doing it. Let's run Johnson Johnson through those metrics. Let's kick it off with the PE ratio, that first metric, their price, 160.39, EPS, 10.51, PE ratio, 15.26. Yeah, the stock market's around 20 to 22 times earnings. So right now, that's a fairly decent price to earnings ratio for J&J right now. And even if that forward EPS isn't quite 10.51, still that would still more than likely be below 18 on j and j okay well let's do a quick game here let's change in our thing eps eight dollars per share that jumps it up to a 20 pe ratio which is in line with the market yeah so even if there's a 20 percent plus haircut on the eps estimate they're still looking solid guys now you know right now they pay on annual you know about four dollars and 52 cent dividend i believe at the time of this video, there should be a nice dividend increase coming in just a couple short months on J and J. I mean, there's going to be no doubt that they're going to increase that dividend. Yes, yeah. they are. The, I, we call them the king of kings, good old reliable. That dividend payout ratio currently is at 43 percent. And similarly, if we shock the EPS, even if it was down to eight, it's still below 60 percent at 56 percent. So a very safe and reliable dividend payment from Johnson and Johnson. Yeah, so now let's talk about those increases. 60 plus years of increase, as you've already said it, they're gonna hit 61 in April. It's just a matter of how large is that dividend increase? Their five-year dividend growth rate is 6.03%. The next few months are gonna be very telling for Johnson and Johnson though, as we learn more about this lawsuit, this might be the year where they deviate a little bit from that sticking between six to 8% annual increase. This might be a lower year, but it might not be because they still have plenty of room to grow the income. So we'll know more over the next two months. thing we can tell you is more likely than not, Johnson & Johnson will be increasing it the 61st time come in April. Exactly, guys. And, you know, right now, based on the, you know, the timing of the video, their yield is over 2.8 at 2.82% since they're down about 10% in 2023 and nearing those 52-week low price points. Yeah. So let's summarize. 15.26 PE ratio payout 43%. Perfect. Five-year dividend growth rate, 6%, 60 increases in 2.82%. Johnson & Johnson, love it. It's on the watch list, but let's move to that second company, UPS. And unfortunately, everybody, let's just get the elephant out of the room here. Our PSA cards were not delivered back to us using UPS. They used FedEx, unfortunately. So it's the one ding we have right now with PSA. You should have supported our stock selfishly by sending the boxes back to us in UPS. But let's talk UPS now. Let's see how they're performing in the metrics too. Before we do that though, Andy, you've been gobbling up some shares of UPS lately, haven't you? Oh, I mean, in 2023, even in you know 2022, I was buying a lot of shares of UPS. Was buying them this past week between 180 and 185, depending on you know what prices uh, were coming in. I was just I, I was looking forward to getting to hopefully a hundred shares. I'm at about 69 right now. Um, obviously, it's a lot of capital to get to that. Bert knows the journey with Johnson and Johnson since they're around similar price points. Um, so yeah, I bought a few shares this week. Love the company. Love the stock. Love the metrics. Um, you know, the, the cool part about it is, hey, we've already got the dividend increase. Not to use the words out of the way this year. But they have increased their dividend already, UPS, from 
Uh, if you remember, a dollar fifty-two to a dollar sixty-two. So if I do just you know a quick quick little math here, you know it's a six and a half, six point six percent increase, which complements the dividend yield so well. But analysts are expecting you to jump into that first metric, guys, of the price to earnings ratio, eleven dollars fifty cents in forward earnings. Remember, J and J was at fifteen times earnings. Well, UPS is at fifteen point nine times earnings. So looking very solid right now based on the price to earnings metric. Beautiful. Let's check that payout ratio. That new dividend after that increase is six dollars and forty eight cents. Gives you a payout ratio of fifty six point three five percent. So also like Johnson and Johnson, that perfect dividend. Beautiful. Oof, it's just absolutely perfect, guys. So let's dive into that dividend history here. Again, 13 plus years of increase in dividends for UPS. The increase at 6.6%. The five-year average is 6.4%. So they're becoming yeah. a very consistent dividend growth stock here. And Bert, uh, go ahead, Bert. I was going to say halfway to becoming a dividend aristocrat. Let's go. The yep. little engine that could. Yeah, 13 years of increase in that dividend. You got to start somewhere. They're halfway across the journey. It's beautiful. And with the price, at, with the stock price at 183, their yield is now 3.54%. So a very, very solid dividend yield for UPS. Yeah, so you had a 3.5% yield with a 6.5% growth rate. That is just a very well-managed, you know, cash flow machine right there. It's like when you, you taste know, the pasta sauce in the pot and you just take the little spoon, wooden spoon, take the bite, you're like, oh, this is perfect. You take that pasta, throw it against the wall and it sticks. Bravo, yeah. bravo, Medicia. So guys, that was UPS stock. Again, a below 16 PE ratio, a 56% payout ratio, almost 6.5% dividend growth rate for 13 years, now yielding 3.454%. So my take here, hot take, RIP, Kevin Love, we miss you on the calf already, guys. But here's our hot take on these two stocks. You know, J and J at 160 or below, I'm probably going to be buying shares. Full disclosure. UPS at current share prices, 183 and below, I'm probably going to accumulate a share here and there as well. Do your own research though, but I will be more than likely buying shares of these two dividend growth stocks. In an even hotter take, I already hit 100 shares each of Johnson and Johnson. But it's finally getting back to the levels where it's like, you know what, F it. Why not possibly keep adding a share or two every once in a while? Why not? At 160, it's a great price for Johnson and Johnson. And even the same with UPS. That's as there. I think I'm at 50 shares, but I'm not going to journey to 100. But I'm looking. Why not? So everybody, tell us what you think of Johnson and Johnson, what you think of UPS. That's what this is all about. Are you with Lanny? Are you just buying shares of these two great dividend growth stocks hand over fist? Or are you looking elsewhere? If you are looking elsewhere, you better freaking tell us in that comment section below what stocks you prefer over these two. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, like this video, come on, let's get this channel on fire. Oh, and by the way, you're either with us or you're against us. That was Bertha Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats over and out.